March 8, 1998, a structure fire at 60th and Western resulted in the tragic loss of Captain Joe DePee. As a result of this incident, the department initiated a significant incident investigation team to review the circumstances surrounding this tragic incident and identify any lessons that might be learned. This tape is a result of those recommendations. The incident presented several forcible entry challenges to the members on scene. Immediately following the incident, the SIT team contacted Captain Lane Kemper to utilize his recognized expertise in forcible entry operations. Captain Kemper recreated the forcible entry challenges from the incident and has documented the results in this tape. My advice to you is to watch the tape all the way through and then watch again, this time breaking it up into segments that represent the different doors and security measures involved. After each segment, while out in your district, identify these doors and stop and discuss the message you would utilize to successfully gain entry and more importantly provide maximum exits during emergency operations. The structure at 5972 Southwestern Avenue was a single-story commercial built in 1949 and was approximately 60 feet wide by 110 feet long. The roof was a trussed arch with five arches. The exterior walls were all of block construction with the floor material consisting of cement. The perimeter of the building was 340 feet with only three openings on the outside. The three openings were two passage doors and one rolling steel door totaling 22 feet or less than 7% of the wall area. A single doorway provided access to the front of the structure which was a 36 inch by 80 inch metal security door that opened out and it covered a 36 inch by 80 inch hollow core metal door that opened inward. On the rear of the structure there was a rolling steel door which was approximately 16 feet wide by 11 feet in height. The rolling steel door was covered by a lock scissor or an accordion type security gate. Access to the rear of the structure was also provided by a 36 inch by 80 inch door. This door was blocked from view and initially never opened. There was also a heavy rod iron rolling gate to gain access to the rear of the building. This was the first door encountered in front of the building. It was open with a combination of cutting and prying. The cutting was made with a rotary saw. The technique was to cut three right angles around the locking mechanism, removing the locks. This operation would have been more efficient and quicker if the cuts were moved out of the heavy metal area of the door and into the mesh area. Also, the cuts made on the door weren't deep enough and didn't penetrate the backside of the door. After the security door was open, attempts to kick in the second door was tried. The second door was a metal door mounted on a metal frame that opened in. The kicking was unsuccessful. The cutting operation on the metal door was a V-cut with a rotary saw incorporating both locks. This was a poor technique because the boxed edge of the strong part of the door was never cut. With a round rotary saw blade and a square corner, the last inch and a half or edge of the door retained its strength. In addition to a poor technique, the cuts were not made deep enough and did not cut through the back sheet metal on the door. The total cutting distance was 71 inches and very time consuming. The door was finally opened with a sledgehammer by breaking the locks out of the door jam. The rear of the building had a locked rolling wrought iron gate. This was opened by cutting the lock off with a rotary saw and rolling the gate open. The next problem was a scissor or accordion style gate locked in the middle. Access to this was made by cutting the lock with a rotary saw and opening the two sections exposing the rolling steel door. The rolling steel door was opened with a three-sided cut. Despite radiated heat from the door, 
These members opened a large hole permitting good access and egress from the building. Out of the recommendations of the SIT team, it was necessary to bring into focus some of the problems that were related to the forceful entry at the Western Avenue fire. What we are going to focus on is security doors, kicking of doors, metal doors with metal frames, accordion or scissor gates, and rolling steel security doors. The construction, design, location of the doors, and fire conditions will be the determining factor on what method or methods you will use. These options are not only methods that can be used to access buildings, but are ideas that can be shared. This training emphasizes getting out of buildings under fire conditions more than it is getting in. An example of this will be a new method and cut on the rolling steel door as compared to the traditional TP cut. This is about forcible exiting, not forcible entering. This is about getting out of buildings under fire condition. The basic construction on a security door is in three areas. The outside frame, which is bolted to the wall, usually with screws or bolts that cannot easily be removed. These outside frames can be mounted on wood or masonry. The door area is constructed of ornamental wrought iron, usually with a see-through mesh on the inside and the locking area. This is of heavy metal to hold the locks or the deadbolts. And normally, they have a doorknob type lock and a deadbolt. The deadbolt can be singled or double keyed. This means that on the inside of the door, there can be a flip lever or keys are needed on both sides of the lock. There is a gap between the door and the frame and can be exposed or covered with a protection plate. So here are some of the options on how to gain entrance through a security door. A quick way that will work on deadbolts with a flip lever on the inside is to take your axe and break the weld to expose the lock from the inside. This enables you to open the door if it has the flip lever on the inside. Sometimes you can take a pry tool, place it between the outside frame and the door and pry the deadbolt out of the frame to open the door. Another method is to cut through the plate covering the deadbolt and then cut through the deadbolt. If the outside frame is easily accessible and there are no bolts holding the outside frame to the wall near the lock area, you can cut the outside frame. This operation is two horizontal cuts above and below the securing bolts incorporating the deadbolt area. This was the method that was attempted at the Western Avenue fire. There are three locks in heavy metal with a see-through mesh surrounding the locks. The first cut is a horizontal cut into the mesh above the lock area. The second cut is a horizontal cut below the lock area. And the third cut is a vertical cut next to the lock area. If done correctly, these cuts remove the locks from the door. There are several ways to kick in doors. The best and safest is the mule kick. You face away from the door and kick near the locking area. Another safe kick is a forward kick, where if the door gives easily, your body stops at the wall or outside of the building. And lastly, this is what you should not do. Don't hit the door with all your body weight and momentum 
to where you go into an unknown and possibly dangerous area. The next door encountered behind the security door was a hollow metal door mounted to a metal frame attached to a masonry wall. These doors either open in or out. Outward opening doors have two advantages over inward opening doors. One is you can normally see the gap between the door and the frame where the locks are and two you have the option of cutting the hinges. The front door at the Western Avenue fire was a 36 inch by 80 inch door and opened in. Inward opening doors have a door jam that stops the door when being closed. This jam covers the gap between the door and the door frame by about half an inch. Also the hinges are on the inside. To cut the locks with a rotary saw first you should remove the doorknob. This will allow you to get more depth with your plunge cuts. Then you should take your rotary saw, placing the blade next to the door jam and plunge cut through the locks. Your cut should be angled at 15 to 30 degrees and should be deep enough to go completely through the door. These cuts should cut through the outside skin of the door through the locks and finished near the inside corner of the door. The cut deadbolt can still be in the door and the frame. So after the plunge cuts are complete, the door needs to be kicked or pried open. The same operation is used if the locks are on the left side of the door, but the saw should be turned upside down. A second option and the operation that opened the door at the Western Avenue fire was to take one of our heavy breaching tools like a sledgehammer or a battering ram and break the locks out of the door frame. This is done by hitting near or on the locks until the door opens. These breaching tools should always be brought to the doors as a primary or backup operation. As mentioned before the advantage to an outward opening door is you can normally see a gap between the door and the frame around the lock area and the hinges are on the outside. This type of door often has a 2x4 or metal bar laid horizontally in saddles on the inside of the door. The way to recognize this problem is carriage bolts on the outside of the door. To open these doors the first cut with the rotary saw should be the lock and the door jam. These should be cut first because they are the deepest and the hardest cuts. Next you should take your rotary saw blade and cut next to the carriage bolt heads at a 45 degree angle. Bury the blade of the saw through the carriage bolt shafts until the bolt head falls out. Do this to all of the carriage bolt heads. This leaves only half the bolt inside the door to hold the saddles and the bar behind the door. Pry open the door, pulling the bolts out of the door and open the door fully. At the rear of the building, there was a large rolling gate. Entry through this was made by cutting the lock with a rotary saw and rolling the gate open. On the building itself was an accordion or scissors gate and a rolling steel door. Accordion or scissor style gates are an open air security gate. Because of this they are almost always with another type of security like glass doors or rolling steel doors. Often there are two sections that lock in the middle where the sections meet. The locks can be on the inside or the outside. The bail of the lock go through the holes and ears of the gate. After the locking area is cut, the sections can be pushed aside for access and egress. Your cuts will depend on the locking mechanism and the height of the doors. 
There are five options to open accordion or scissor gates. First is to find where the gates meet and cut the locks. This is quick if it is a simple lock and not case hardened steel or a hockey puck type lock. If it is case hardened steel, cut both sides of the bale. Another method that works well with high security locks is to cut one or both of the ears off, eliminating the lock. This can be done if the locks are on the outside or inside of the gate. By cutting through the gates above and below the lock enables you to remove the locking area. Remember, if you can lift up the track off the ground, it is one less thing to trip over and it holds the accordion doors out of the way. If you can't cut the locks or get to where the gates connect to each other, you can cut the crossbars in a channel, top to bottom, and slide the gate open. And finally, if you can't reach the top, you can make a horizontal cut left to right, then cut the crossbars in the channel and push that area open. After the accordion or scissor gate was open, a rolling steel door was encountered. Rolling steel doors are made of heavy steel construction. They are mounted in horseshoe shaped tracks that face each other. The door is mounted above the tracks on brackets and lowered into the tracks. The bottom of the door is usually two pieces of angle iron forming an upside down T. The field or middle of the door is individual pieces of metal or slats. They are joined together by bending the metal around each other. This allows the door to be rolled up into a barrel. This also allows the separate pieces of metal to slide sideways. In the tracks, there are guides that help the door slide up and down in the track. The guides are normally every other slat. When open, the door is rolled up into a barrel out of the way. The barrel can be mounted inside or outside of the building. Inside the barrel, there is a spring to help lift the considerable weight of the door. The door can be raised manually by using a chain or it can have an electric motor to raise it. Locking devices are normally on the barrel side of the door. Locks can be found on the chain or on the angle iron on the bottom of the door. To open a rolling steel door with the barrel and locks on the outside, simply cut the locks and use the chain to lift the door. If the barrel and locks are on the inside, you'll have to cut through the door to open it. The traditional cut on a rolling steel door is a teepee cut. To do a teepee cut, you should take your rotary saw and cut in the middle of the door above your head. Ideally, your cut should be at 45 degree angle and end about one foot from the edge of the door. Ending one foot from the edge of the door will avoid cutting through the heavy metal lock area. Your second cut should start near your first cut but not connected. The second cut should mirror the first cut. third cut is to connect the two cuts at the top and let the middle section fall. Even the best TP cut is not a very good exit and only one person can pass through at a time. If you have completed your TP cut, your next operation should be to make the opening larger by pulling the slats out of the tracks on both sides. 
The teepee cut takes a long time to do, uses a lot of blade on your rotary saw, and is a poor exit. The three-sided cut on a rolling steel door was a cut used on the Western Avenue fire. The proper way to cut a three-sided cut is to start with your horizontal cut. This is the hardest and most time-consuming cut, so it should be the first cut. Start on the left side of the door and cut about head high. Cutting left to right gives you more height because our saws are carried with the cutting blade in an outboard position. Begin your horizontal cut one foot from the left wall and end your cut one foot from the right wall. Staying one foot from the wall keeps you from cutting into the heavy metal lock areas. Your second cut is a vertical cut cut on the right side, one foot from the wall ending near the bottom. Don't cross cut with your horizontal cut for this will keep the door in place until the door is ready to drop. Your third cut is a vertical cut, one foot from the left wall. Again, don't cross cut with a horizontal cut and end your cut near the bottom. And lastly, you connect the cuts of the corners and let the middle of the door fall. At this time, you should try and pull the slats out of the track to raise the door the rest of the way. This cut uses a lot of blade and is time consuming but offers a great exit. Several people can exit this easily at the same time. This is a new cut known as a slice and pull and would have worked at the Western Avenue fire. The object of forcible exiting is to get fire companies out of the buildings quickly if things go wrong during firefighting operation. This cut is quick uses less blade on the rotary saw and enables more amount of light and fresh air into the building. The object of this cut is to replace the teepee cut as a standard rolling steel door operation. The cut is started by cutting in the middle of the rolling steel door above your head. This cut is a straight cut ending near the bottom of the door. Cutting the middle of the door makes the door sloppy and makes pulling of the slats equal and easier. Next, you lean into the door and get a visual that the cut is complete, top to bottom. Then you take your channel locks and pull the slats out of the track. The slats will generally come out in large sheets. When pulling, pull about chest high where your strength is. Pull the slats parallel to the ground and straight, not away from the door. Clean out one side and do the same operation on the other side. At this time, the firefighting company can make entrance into the building with a large exit behind them. Then you should open the door the rest of the way by cutting the lock off the chain and raising the door. If the chain is not locked, the door will usually lift by itself because there is less weight on the door and the lifting spring in the barrel will lift the door. According to door manufacturers, the slats will not pull out of the track in approximately 5% of all rolling steel doors. To make sure we can get into 100% of the buildings, we make the same cut down the middle. If the slats won't pull out of the track, make another cut one foot from the wall. This will eliminate any problems in the track and will get you into 100% of the rolling steel doors. Even this hole is larger than a teepee cut and there is less cutting. On rolling steel doors that are recessed more than a couple of feet, do the same operation. After you pull the slats as far as you can and you can't maneuver the corner, cut the slats again and pull until the section drops and repeat on the other side. Loading docks with small ledges would be especially hard to do a TP cut. The slice and pull method works well on loading docks. 
Set your ladder slightly off center and make your center cut. From the ground you can safely pull the slats. Identify where and how your opening devices work and open the door fully. The width of the large rolling steel doors can make it hard to pull the slats. These doors should be cut into manageable pieces. Here we cut the door into thirds and remove the center area. Again, try to pull the slats from the track. If this does not work, identify the opening devices and raise the door. Remove parts of a door that will impinge your exit. If slats are hard to remove, you can use your axe to push the slats sideways. With gloved hand, you can push a section of the door away from the tracks or you can hit it out with your axe. In the downtown area of Los Angeles, we have been using the slice and pull method with great success. This footage shows the new cut on the left with the TP cut on the right. These are identical saws, identical doors, and two good firefighters making the cuts. This compares the time and the benefits of each cut. Remember, if the chain on the inside isn't locked, the door will raise on its own because of the spring in the barrel. These are some of the problems you will run into if you can't or don't pull the slats after completing your TP cut. A new style door that looks like a rolling still door is the sheet curtain door. These doors are very popular and are in every fire station district. They are like rolling steel door in appearance. They roll up in a barrel that can be inside or outside. They ride up and down in tracks and are opened manually by chain or electric motors. The locking devices are similar to rolling steel. There can be locks on the chain and the base of the door. There are also several differences. Instead of individual pieces of metal or slats, this door is one solid piece of metal. It has panels pressed together every two or three feet. The metal is thinner and lighter than rolling steel doors. The thickness is 24 gauge or about the thickness of a credit card. At the bottom there is usually one piece of angle iron in an L shape. Since the metal on a sheet curtain door is thinner than a rolling steel door, it goes a lot faster during cutting operations. Here are two options on how to cut sheet curtain doors. One method is to cut one foot from the wall on the left side. The cut should start above your head 
and end near the bottom. With a round blade and a square corner, you will not be able to cut the angle iron on your first cut. To cut through the angle iron, cut a small teepee cut big enough to get the rotary saw into. Then continue your first cut through the angle iron to the floor. To make sure the cut is complete, kick the angle iron to see if the two pieces are completely cut through. The next cut connects with your first cut with a horizontal cut, left to right. Cut as far as you can to the right. Open the door out using the section to protect you from the fire. Firefighting companies can now fight fire with a good exit behind them. You can now cut the remaining three or four inches of the door in the track and remove the middle section of the door. To open the door fully, cut locks on the bottom of the door and cut the locks off the chain. Raise door fully to raise smoke level and allow fresh air and light into the building. Another method that has been successful in the field is the three-sided cut. The first cut is again one foot from the left wall. The cut should be above your head all the way to the ground. The second cut should be a horizontal cut left to right. Crossing first cut, this cut should end about one foot from the right wall. The third cut is a vertical cut on the right side. Do not cross cut this corner so the door stays in place during the rest of the cutting. Cut should be head high to near bottom. Then cut the corner on the right side and let the door fall. Firefighting companies have now an exit for their operation. To lift door completely, cut through the angle iron and place the hose line under the door. And cut the remaining side, then raise the door. In conclusion, be aware that doors that have lifting devices can rapidly open and can cause materials to fall, exposing firefighters to potential injuries. And finally, this shows that the slice and pull method works even if the door is old and hasn't been opened for years. Remember, train as if your life depends upon it, because it does.